All right. At some point uh, this year, I will be teaching my students uh, about projectile motion. The uh, projectile motion simulation that I've seen on FET is really quite lovely, uh, but uh, perhaps there's another version that would be better. Um, this one does not, for example, show uh, in, in what I would think a very sophisticated sort of way uh, the, the vector breakdown of those projectiles. So I have looked at a couple of others this evening, and I find that the, I'm not happy with this one at all, uh, but I did like this one. So I may be using this one in class. Again, uh, it's, uh, it's a little sophisticated for a little, perhaps even a little intimidating for, uh, for my uh, freshmen, but I think that with, um, with the right guidance, um, perhaps as a as a demonstration for them, rather than having them play with it on, too much on their own, or at least at first, I can show them how it works and and discuss some of the details of it. Uh, what we see here is uh, is the this screen that will just basically show the setup. We can change the angle um, uh, by adjusting that toggle switch there. Uh, we'll keep that one. Let's let's keep that one to say 30 degrees. And it turns out that if it doesn't go easily exactly where I want it to go, I can pop in here and put it ex exactly 30 if I so choose. Um, I can increase the initial velocity, meaning the, the initial speed that we fire it at. Again, should be able to just drag that along and set that at a, a setting that we're, we're comfortable with. I'm going to aim for about 40. Again, if I want it to be an exact number, I can always just type it in like so. I am going to change the acceleration due to gravity. A lot of um, it is most typically taught as 9.8 meters per second squared, but in my class, to keep the math a little simpler and a little more conceptual, uh, it's easier for students to notice the patterns and learn the behaviors if they're not terribly distracted by the, uh, by the extra decimals. So um, we make that small change and then fire the projectile. When we do, we can see that it quickly leaves the screen. So I'm going to slow that down a little bit so that we can see where it happens. Let's have it land right about there. Okay. So once again, I'm going to reset it and fire. I'm going to change the animation speed so that you can see the whole thing develop a little more slowly. And we, what, you, what this very nicely shows is that as the ball continues, as the projectile continues to move upward, the upward velocity drops to zero. As uh, we go back, let's go ahead and reset that so you can see it again. This vector quantity gets smaller and smaller. This one is affected by gravity, so gravity is slowing the ball down as it goes up. Now, once it gets to the top, it is no longer climbing. It's no longer going up. At that point, it will simply, uh, gravity will continue to accelerate it in a downward direction, and that velocity downward will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that is exactly what I want to show them.